Um, so we already have people joining. Thank you so much guys for, for being here today. My name is uh, JP and I'm the Community Engagement Coordinator at Latham Startups. And thank you for attending this info session where we'll be you know, talking all things startups, Latham Startups, uh, our programs, our community, our events, our jobs, uh, a lot of stuff. We have a, a lot of things uh, going on. So thank you uh, so much for being here. I think I'll, I'll I'll give everyone you know a couple of minutes to to enter the the webinar because I think we we have a a couple of people in the in the queue so you know regarding everyone's time I think I'll give a a couple of minutes and then we can we can get started in the meantime feel free to introduce yourself maybe in the chat or if you want maybe even a, uh, turn off your turn on your cameras, and we can we can say hi to you. So let's uh, wait for a couple of minutes until we get things started. I'm guessing most of you already know about Latam Latam startups, but in the meantime, as we as we wait for people to to join the the meeting. Let me start by introducing a little bit of what we do. We are an accelerator based here in, in Toronto, uh, in Canada, and we help companies from, from all over the world to soft land their businesses here in Canada. As you can see, Latam Startups is the name of our, of our accelerator. So we have mostly helped companies from Latam, but now nowadays we're, we're helping companies from, from all over the world from other emerging markets, India, Pakistan, Middle East, you name it, we're all over the place. So in the next few months, you'll be seeing a new, a new brand coming from, from our side. We are changing our image because we are, you know, as I told you, expanding to other markets and we want to be more inclusive uh, to those markets. So that's uh, something very exciting that we have uh, going on. And uh, yeah, I think it's already 12.03. So yeah, we have uh, more people joining, but I think... You can go ahead, JP, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Let's go ahead. We have uh, enough people to start. Otherwise, uh, if, you, if you join later, you'll, you'll get the chance to see the recording on our YouTube channel. So, okay. Let's get this started. And as you can see, we help startups scale. That's our motto. We, we help them subland their businesses here in, in Canada to you know, kickstart their North American journeys. Because let's face it, most people, they want to uh, target bigger markets like the United States. But Canada, we have so many interesting things going on. We are a very friendly, country for immigrants. Uh, there's a lot of help from the government in the, into their uh, businesses. So, so let's see how, how LATAM startups can help you achieve those, uh, those goals. So let's start for our, our programs. As you can see, we have a series of programs, the Startup Visa, the Corporate, uh, Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program. But let's start with the Startup Visa, which is our signature program and the one that we have more applications. And over the years, we've helped uh, over 200 startups in our, in our community. But specifically on the Startup Visa, in the last few years, we've been, we've been, able, to, we've been able to help over uh, 40, 40 startups since uh, 2019. And first of all, I wanted to talk to you about the inception of this startup visa program. It started in 2013 and it was created by the government of Canada to bring tech talent into the, into the country and help them grow their businesses. And of course, uh, if they help them grow, they can of course create jobs here in Canada. So it's a, it's a win-win for, for the country that's seeking for more immigrants and tech talent to to populate the country. 
and as well as creating jobs for, for Canadians and people that are uh, maybe temporary residents as well. So that's uh, one of the, uh, like the first reason of this program of, of existing. So let's check a little bit more about the, about the program. Um, as you can see, this program is uh, composed of three phases. First of all, uh, phase one, the market validation is where people and, and founders can can get a, a better understanding of the of the Canadian market. You know, like most of our companies, they come from their you know uh, home countries and they already have traction. They already have sales. Uh, we can say that their revenues, their annual revenues, range between 200k between 200k and 10 million dollars but when they land here in Canada they they don't have any clients they don't have any customers and they need all the help they can get into getting to know um, the Canadian customer and the Canadian market so so that's why we created this uh, startup visa path as a three phase program so in phase one which is uh, which lasts for a month we 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 generate all this help and help them into uh, testing these assumptions if they're wrong or right. So once we we get that um, done, they they go through phase two, which is the market entry program, which is a more in depth look at their products, at their value proposition, and that's where we help them into getting to know the customer more. So we have uh, focus groups, uh, more market research. And of course, a lot of help from our uh, business mentors, market experts. So that's uh, another one, another help that we provide for them is like having the right contacts uh, and the right people to, to help them guide them into their uh, business development here in, in the country. So that's also uh, a two month uh, program two month phase. And after that, we, uh, if all the right conditions are given, we provide the startups with a, with a letter of support. What is a letter of support? So as I was telling you before, LATAM startups is a designated institution by the, by the Canadian government. So we provide the startup visa program backed by the uh, Canadian government. So every time um, a company uh, ends in a good in good terms this uh, this first two phases. We provide the letter the letter of support, which, as the name says, it supports the startup's case. It doesn't assure them to get the uh, the PR the permanent residence, because at the end of the day, the Canadian government is the and the immigration officers are the one that can give you eventually the the permanent residence. But in the meantime, we, we help them with all the, with all the documents. We, we have uh, immigration lawyers that can help, that, that can help you into, into getting uh, the papers done. We have incorporation lawyers that are also partners with us. I'm gonna talk a little bit later about that, about our, our partners. But as I was telling you, you, you get all the help you can get with, uh, if you join our programs, then you face, after you finish phase two, we give the letter of support, and then you enter into the acceleration path, which is six months into this um, uh, of the of the startup visa path. So here you have a uh, same thing, uh, all the help with with business mentors. We can even uh, provide you with uh, with C fractionals, uh, market experts, uh, even marketing interns that we we provide to to all of our participating startups. They can get a help from, from the business, from the sales and marketing side. We also, uh, we also provide uh, that. So having that said, it's a, of course it's, it has a lot of components, this program. And I would say the most important part, like the criteria of what companies do we choose is of course, one of the, one of the most important. 
So for starters, the Canadian government, they ask you to have a intellectual property. This is a, a major issue when, when you apply to the startup uh, visa program. You have to be able to claim some kind of a, a rights over you know, patents, trademarks, and everything that you can claim as uh, intellectual property. And actually here in this, in, this, in this very page, you can, you can even have a more, uh, a better sense of what intellectual property is and, and what intellectual property uh, strategy is best suited uh, for you. So any, any questions you may have regarding this, you can, you can put in the chat. It's, it's easier for, for visibility. And, 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 and always you can reach out later because I know sometimes when you're in a live event, you, you can forget about some, some questions. So feel free to reach us out. We are always available through LinkedIn, through our emails. I'm gonna be talking about a little more about our team on the a few minutes uh, ahead. So, and before finishing with the, I'm going Someone to say else. something and something in regards of the program. Thank, thank you, JP, for presenting about the, the first program, which is, you know, one that is very popular, the Servisa program. There are always three questions that we get very often. I don't know if somebody has, you know, in their minds these questions, but I want to address these questions now. By the way, my name is Miriam Nazarte. I'm the CEO of Latin Startups. So one of the first questions we get about this program is when the letter of support is given. So the letter of support uh, for those that are willing to enter to this program is given after phase two. So it's basically three months. You finish the three months, you know, the first phase is one month. Second phase is two months. You finish the second month. And then, you know, after the evaluation from our board of directors, then is when it's given the letter of support because many people sometimes they think, oh, it's going to be after, you know, the phase three uh, finishes. And then, you know, that does not how it works. It works at the beginning of phase three. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, clarify that intellectual property. I want also to clarify that, you know, many people don't come immediately with intellectual property, but they can claim intellectual property over the process. So if that's your case, you know, it can be copyrights. It could be, you know, uh, that you are in a path to get patents, uh, you know, trade uh, secrets. Trademarks is not as an important for a startup visa mm -hmm. program. Uh, just to mention also that in the last, um, you know, in this year, we got, you know, two companies that got their permanent residence. Until now, we haven't get any rejection for permanent residence, thanks God. Uh, so we have seven companies in total that have received their permanent residence from the group that we have right now, considering that they enter, you know, most of them in between 2020 and 2021, and some of them that have been entered also in 2022, and some people move with, uh, you know, work permits. So work permits work a little bit faster than permanent residence. Uh, for work permits, we have seen an unprecedented number of uh, work permits approved this year by IRCC. We are very glad to see that you know this uh, this um, this process is getting on. Uh, so it, we are like um, hopeful that you know the companies that are applying for the program are going to get in the path. Yes, we have to do a lot of work, and that's why, you know, uh, we try our best to compile the program with mentors and industry market um, people that can help the company to really get customers and grow in North America. So for those that have more questions about that, you know, on our website, we actually have, uh, you know, frequent asked questions, and you can see there from other people in the market. So um, it, the application, yeah. So just be mindful, the application that is open right now is for those that are entering in May, okay? So I'm going to, I, I think Samar, can you please put the link for the application there? Um, <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Daniel. Uh, and también nos pueden decir cualquier cosa en español y podemos hablar en español también. But being mindful that some people here don't speak Spanish, I will continue in English, but if you need any question in Spanish, please let us know. Uh, JP is from Chile, I'm from Colombia. 
the summer is not <laughs> so <laughs> from our team <laughs> so but any anyway guys uh so the application right now is open for phase one okay this is yeah. not an easy process but we are here to help you so please you know if you have any other questions go ahead ask us the questions jp are going to is going to explain the other programs that, that we have because we also have other programs and uh, then, you know, explain a little bit about our team. Um, and in, in the meantime, uh, we are here answering questions in the chat if you have any. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, uh, Miriam, for, for pitching, pitching in there. Uh, well, as you know, Miriam, she's the founder of Latam Startup, so she has the, the better knowledge of all the specifics. So if you want to ask more in-depth questions, for sure, uh, direct, direct them to, to her. Uh, and also, let me talk to you about the, the corporate program, which is also one of our uh, signature programs. In this case, this is uh, this is very similar to the to the startup visa program, especially on the phase three side. We we sh we should say that the corporate pro program is is identical to to phase three. The only difference is that for the corporate people are or founders, they are not seeking immigration. So they're just seeking to to get a you know have a an office here in Canada, a headquarter incorporated here, and then run operations of uh, North America or maybe Europe. Because one of the main advantages of, of of Canada and especially Toronto is that we're very close to to New York, to Boston, to Chicago, so to the east coast of the of the United States. So we are in a similar or in the same time zone actually, and we're not that far from. From Europe as well, so it's a it's a it's a great place to to run operations of uh, of North America and and Europe. So that's why a lot of companies choose uh, the corporate program because they they want to only have here uh, an office and and headquarters. So this program it, it also has all the all the perks of the startup visa. Uh, you have the sales pitch preparation, investment pitch preparation, the C fractionals, the the marketing interns, and all the help uh, that you can that you can get. So, as you can see, our our website is very you know it has very complete and detailed information. So now I want to go to the newcomer ah, and also about the corporate the the applications applications for the program is on an on a rolling basis. So we have a open applications all year long. Uh, as a difference of the startup visa that Miriam already told you that uh, we have uh, different cohorts throughout the year. Uh, the next cohort is uh, starting on May 29th. Um, deadline for, for applications is on, on May 10th. So for the corporate, that, that's not an issue. And for the Newcomer Entrepreneur Accelerator Program, again, it's very similar to the other programs, but in this case, we help mostly uh, companies and founders that are already based in Canada. So they are either permanent residents or citizens, but they are newcomers. They are still been here. Uh, they landed here, I don't know, five, 10 years ago, but they're still uh, categorized as uh, newcomers. So as newcomers, they also need all the help they can get. This program started as a, as a pilot. Uh, backed by IRAP, which is a, a government uh, organization as well. And they've been helping us into having funds for, uh, you know, running this program. Because uh, I would say uh, this program is, is, we don't want to say it's for free, because sometimes when it's, uh, when stuff are, are for free, people, they, they don't tend, you know, to, to give as much importance. So, it's only five hundred dollars of, of contribution, but still, it gives you six months of of, of help and accelerating into into growing uh, your business. So I would say, um, if you want to join, you can join our waitlist because we recently ended a a cohort and we are planning on having a, a new cohort later in the year. We'll be promoting it uh, with adva in advance. In the in the next few weeks for sure. So always keep an eye on our social channels. We are very active on on LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So 
uh, Samar, also if you, if you if you want, you can share our our social media accounts in the in the chat box as well, so they can uh, follow us if they haven't already been been following us. So that's for the NIA program. And now let's talk a little bit about the build up a scale up. As I, as I told you before, we we only accept companies that have a you know a minimum viable product, but recently we we figured that. You know, some some people they have an idea, they wanna they wanna dig into the tech uh, ecosystem in in Toronto in Canada. Why not help them as well? So we already we started this program as as a pilot uh, recently. So we also have a a waiting list for uh, for a next cohort. So as I told you before, keep an eye on our socials when we open up uh, applications. But in the meantime, feel free to to join our, our wait list. And another program that we're very excited about is the Rio Scala Bootcamp. As you know, we have a, our roots are in Latin America. So we have a very extended network of, uh, of collaborators in Latin America. And we're having a, a bootcamp in Rio, in Brazil, because we're also attending Web Summit Rio. As you know, Web Summit is one of the biggest tech conferences in the world. And this is uh, the first time that it's gonna be uh, hosted outside Europe. So in the last few years, it's always been Web Summit Lisbon. And this year, first time it's gonna be hosted outside Europe. And what a better place than, than Brazil, which is one of the you know, biggest emerging markets in the world and one of the biggest tech hubs as well. So we're, we're taking advantage of that and our vast network to, to run a bootcamp. So, We'll have uh, uh, sessions, you know, legal sessions, an overview of the Brazilian ecosystem. So this is all happening on the first day of, uh, of Web Summit, which is gonna be on, on May 1st. So we'll be having this session in the, in the afternoon, you know, getting ready for the, for the launch of the event that's happening on the, on the evening. So we're very excited about that. We'll be having, uh, Part of the team traveling to Rio. We'll also have a accelerator center joining. Uh, we'll have our trade commissioners, the Canada trade commissioners, there. So it's going to be uh, very exciting to get to know uh, Brazilian and Latin America, and, and of course people from all over the world. It's on. It's not only for for people in Latin America. People from all over the world are are joining this event. So we, we're very excited to be there, having this boot camp. And on the last day, well, uh, Web Summit ends on, on the 4th of May, but on the next day, on May 5th, we have an optional ecosystem tour, which will give you, you know, even better insights uh, on, on what's happening with the Brazilian uh, tech ecosystem. So feel free to, to join that if you're, if you're attending Web Summit uh, Rio, or if you, know, if you know of anyone that's attending Web Summit, please, please feel free to to pass, uh, to spread the word on, on this event. So, and talking about boot camps, I want to talk lastly about the Hamilton Niagara boot camp, which is a uh, we we've been running it for a couple of years now. Uh, this year we're expecting the the third edition. And why Hamilton and Niagara? Like Toronto, it's it's very close to Hamilton and Niagara, and those are big innovation hubs in the region in in Tor in, in Ontario in the Ontario province. So we've also partnered with them into running this, uh, this bootcamp. You can have uh, more information, of course, uh, in our website, but as, an, uh, as a premier uh, news for you, we'll be running this year's bootcamp during uh, the Toronto Economic Global Forum, which is happening on, uh, on October, mid-October. So, it's still a long way until that day, but still keep an eye on our on our social media channels so we can um, tell you about more details of the of this event. So that's a brief overview of the of the programs. As you can see, it's a lot of information to take into. Uh, I know you may have a, a lot of questions, so in the meantime, as I'm talking, feel free to drop them in the in the chat box, and I'll go to. Uh, to the next uh, part of this webinar. As you can see, we have uh, a lot of companies that we've helped over the years. 
from various sectors of the tech uh, industry. We have a, you know, Helltale, Infinite Harvest, Vibrant, RD, you know, they're very different re between each other, but they, but they have the same goal, you know, to generate uh, awareness of their products and their innovative uh, solutions. So if you have an innovative solution that you're already, you know, running or thinking of running, you know, please feel free to, to contact us and see how we can uh, better help you. And, you know, what better way of, you know, selling our portfolio is than, you know, saying that we have uh, two unicorns. So throughout the years, we've been able to help companies becoming unicorns, which is uh, over $1 billion in, in valuation. So we have two companies, one from Uruguay, Kona, and the other one from Brazil, Cloudwalk, uh, Cloudwalk that have been able to, to become uh, unicorns. So we're very you know, proud of, of that. They all uh, started in the startup visa path. Uh, one of them uh, finished them and the other one didn't, but they still uh, took a lot of uh, learnings about the Canadian tech ecosystem through that. Uh, so it's very, uh, it was very valuable uh, for them. And what better way than testimonials from all of our companies. So if you go into our news, uh, we, we share uh, regularly, almost uh, weekly or at least monthly, we share the experiences of all of our uh, startups. So we have, for instance, Pocket Clinic, which is a device that helps uh, inject uh, medicine for people with diabetes. Uh, we have um, Logic AI we, we, that helps businesses in with our artificial intelligence. Uh, we have K3 that helps, uh, you know, supply chain and trucks into being more sustainable. Uh, Infinite Harvest, which, you know, develops uh, uh, food or protein from animal waste. So as you can see, we have a, a various series of, uh, of different tech startups, and you can know more about their founders and their stories through this link in the, in the news uh, section. Um, what else? Let me let me talk to you a little bit about ourselves. So we, our team, we have a, a board of directors, and we have, a, as you know, Miriam, Carla, Taiwo, Meg, Paula, Marzelli, Atilio, myself, Samar, and and Deb. So you can feel free to connect with us. I mean, we have our LinkedIn profiles open there, so you can know more about not only Latam because we we've all been somehow involved in in other roles. And it's always, you know, good to know uh, more ex experiences about people that are already out there in the market. So you can also get in touch with our C-Fractionals. These are, you know, guys with a lot of experience in the in business, our business mentors as well. We have here Diego, you know, he's the founder of Kona. So he's one of our uh, unicorns. And till this day, he's been uh, able to help us and help other companies into into having better, uh, better products and better value propositions. So this is always uh, something that our startups value uh, a lot. And what about events? That's one of our signatures as well, like hosting events online as this one, as this webinar and, and in person. So our, actually in a few days, in a couple of days, we have uh, lessons learned where we invite uh, some of our uh, founders to tell their experiences growing their businesses here in Canada. So what a, what a, best, uh, what a better occasion than you know, having these lessons learned uh, events um, every month. So we also combine them with, uh, with margaritas because we like you know, to, to have a traditional Latin American drinks. It's not always margaritas. It could be it could be caipirinhas, mojitos, etc. But it's always a reason, you know, for people after the fireside chat to to network. So we also have a uh, uh, food as well, uh, traditional foods from from the countries. It's not it's not always Latin American. We we also had some, you know, food from India and Middle East that have been a part of uh, of past events. So if you go into our events, you can. Uh, you can know uh, you can uh, know about the events that are upcoming. We also have a Brazil in the spotlight coming soon. We are hosting a series of events that highlight the most emerging markets in, in Latin America. So we already had a 
Mexico, Colombia, Peru, Chile, and now we have Brazil. And in the future, we also have uh, Argentina and, and Uruguay. So also keep an eye on our social media so you can learn more about these events in, in the future. And of course, the Rio Bootcamp that I already talked to you about. Uh, and finally, uh, something that we're very uh, excited about is our, our conference. This is our 10th edition of the LATAM conference, and we are super excited and super proud of what we've come to achieve in the, in the past 10 years. So we already have our agenda of speakers ready, people from all over the place, from Brazil, from Chile, from Silicon Valley, from the UK, uh, from the States, also from Canada. And they'll be talking all things Web3, um, trending technologies in emerging markets. So, so keep an eye on that as well. I encourage you to, to visit this, uh, this site because we already have a, uh, the presentations of them in place. They'll be talking about Web3, blockchain, the future of AI, things that are already trending and that have been on the, on the spotlight for, uh, for quite some time now. So we have that, that in, in place uh, as well. Um, and, as, and as I was talking to you about the, um, the LATAM in the Spotlight series, every time we, we have a, a different country, we release uh, a white paper. So if you wanna know more about, this, uh, about the different Latin American markets, you can go to our website and download them. We have these events every two years. So you can also have a, have a look at past white papers editions, you know, from 2021 or even uh, 2019. So coming soon, we'll, we'll be having also white papers from Brazil and Argentina uh, and Uruguay. Another thing that we also, uh, that we also have uh, regularly is that we, we upload uh, different job positions. So in the past, we've been uh, looking for market, marketing interns, marketing assistants, uh, administrative assistants or, and whatnot. And you can, you can of course go to our uh, website as well and, and learn more about job postings that we may be conducting in the, in the future. And as I told you, uh, we, we talk a lot about ourselves. You, you heard me, you heard Miriam. You can, you can see our social media channels. But I think who speaks more than us is our you know, happy customers, in this case, our founders. What, and you can learn more about what they say in our YouTube channel. We, we regularly uh, as well upload videos of them telling their experience and you know, building their businesses here in, in Toronto and having let them as their as their allies. So we're, we're beyond happy on what we've done in the, in the last few years into helping these uh, startups scale. And as Miriam said, we've already helped a lot of them into getting their PRs, getting their work permits. And of course, this startup, they are getting a lot of investment from, from the government, investors, VCs, angels. So it's been very exciting few years, you know, with a, pandemic in the middle, it was hard, but uh, slowly we've been uh, going back to normal and, you know, happy to help and happy to ho have you here. If you're, if you're based in Toronto, please register for, for Lessons Learned that is coming this Thursday. And well, I think that's, that's it from my side. I, I think, uh, what speaks more than than me it's you know uh, our community and part of our community is you guys so if you, if you have any questions please please feel feel free to maybe open your mic if you want or as I as I see there you you've already have some questions on the yeah, on the chat you're very active the chat uh, thank you so much yeah. for all the questions so i'm going to answer some of them that you know i couldn't answer directly in the chat because some of them require a better answer. Uh, so the first uh, first thing, you know, I know uh, for those uh, those of you like are thinking in a start visa program and are thinking about the processing time. Guys, there is no magic answer about that. Unfortunately, uh, you know, the government of Canada has their own processing time. Sometimes you can, you know, request to see the processing time in the website. 
uh, you know, for work permits and permanent residents, I can see very different um, approach, uh, you know, from the government of Canada. Sometimes people get, you know, work permits in two weeks. Some other times they can get work permits in four months or six months, depending where you are located and depending of the case. We don't know why sometimes some work permits get faster than others. Um, so it really depends of your business and how strong your business is. You have to remember that the Stata Visa program is a program that is basically, you know, the government is, is asking you, you are bringing a business here, I'm going to give you a visa, you know, to work in that business. So it, it doesn't work in, in some other ways that people are like, oh, I have an idea and I want to bring my idea there. And it has to be something already that is working and it's okay if you are modifying, it's okay if you are pivoting through the, um, you know, through the time that you are entering Canada, but you have to have something. So it's very difficult to know times during the pandemic, their residence was really um, challenging, you know, to get the processing time done. Now this year, it seems like um, they are uh, getting better on the processing time, but the fastest permanent residence we had in our community was three months. Okay, somebody got their permanent residence in three months. That was the first case we ever had. And then, uh, you know, the, uh, the longest case has been three years during the pandemic. So as you can see, it depends really, you know, um, what is the startup, what is the time? Sometimes the startups don't use lawyers. I encourage you to use lawyers when you are in this, ta in this type of processes and, and work in your business because it's not like people give you the letter of support and then magically things are going to happen. Uh, if you ever hear somebody telling you, hey, here I give you the letter of support and you have to pay for this, then you know that's the grown process. You have to make sure that you are working in your business. The government of Canada certainly is looking for a scale ups. So uh, it's, it's way easier that you, uh, if you have a, a scalable company, if you don't, you are not yet there, we can help you. But you know, you have to put your 100% or 120% and we are going to put our 120% to make sure your business is going to be up and running. Nobody is coming to Canada because of the Canadian market. We are just 39 million people. People are coming to Canada because you can grow globally to different countries. You can access the States, you can access Europe, you can access mature markets. So that's our purpose here is to help you. And as a newcomer, as a newcomer community, we understand what you're trying to do, okay? We understand your challenges. You understand what is your intention behind. And we know this is a balance between personal life and business life. So believe me, we have been there. We have worked with over 200 companies. So we know what you are facing on. Not all of them are applying for a start visa program, but those that are applying for a start visa program, I can put my hands on on fire for them because I know they are good business and we are still working with them. Now, the best way to contact us, Jess, is through email, Stefano. Uh, you know, for you that you are asking about, you know, the, the process and all that, the best way, if you are interested for a start visa program is to apply for phase one. You have to go through the process if you want to do that. You know, you apply for phase one and then, you know, for those promising startups, we will have an interview and we will enroll those startups at the end of May, if I'm not wrong. Uh, so, we just have three cohorts a year, but we try to work with the best startups as possible. Uh, so, uh, I mean, it's a lot of to, it's, it's a lot of information to take here. I uh, know Stefano was also uh, talking about investment and funding. You know, it's, it's also good for you to know that Canada has a lot of funding. You know, free money from the government for companies that are relocated here. We sometimes encourage our startups to access grants first than go for investors because at the beginning you need, you know, maybe accessing for operations or to grow the company. There are different types of grants in the market that you can perhaps apply and access. 
you know, everyone has a different case and many cases are very complex, very complicated because you come from a different type of environment and, you know, coming to new market and a mature market as Canada is, you know, you have to switch a lot of things in between them, your attitude <laughs> towards business. So it's not an easy process. So guys, anyone with questions, maybe you want to open your microphone. Uh, you know, I know we have answered a lot of questions here. <laughs> I hope that, you know, uh, JP uh, step up in different topics that we have. And that's why we have these info sessions because we receive four to five inquiries per day about our programs. It's pretty difficult yeah. to jump up in, uh, you know, just individual calls with each one because it's too much. <laughs> we, we have different type of cohorts and activities per day. Uh, so if anyone has any questions, please be free to open the microphone. If, if not, then, um, you know, you can perfectly send us an email and we will follow up by email for sure. So any questions? I guess everything is clear now. Guys, uh, thank you so much for joining here today. Uh, this recording is going to be available in our YouTube channel. So, uh, you know, we are going to send you an email and, uh, you know, for those that are coming in June for Collision Conference, please come to our conference too. It's going to be the first day of Collision. Uh, you know, those that, uh, anyone going to Rio, we are going to be there. We are pretty active with events all around. So uh, I hope that we keep in touch and any questions, happy to answer by email. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys for being here today and see you soon, hopefully in some uh, of our events, if not in person, online. Take care. Bye.